Section 8 of A to Z. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. A to Z by Various. The Handyman by Kate Gannett Wells. A handyman is the greatest convenience a woman can possess. Ever since Eve presumably found him in Adam, family life has more or less depended upon him, save in those uncivilized tribes where, in addition to being a woman, the female has to assume the tasks of the man. But, as specialization has stepped in to take the place of being jack of all trades, the handyman is dwarfed and in many homes has become extinct. Yet what wife or mother would not rather have him round the house than an expert bacteriologist or a connoisseur in ceramics? Only the wealthy, who can issue the day's orders to as many separate individuals as there are jobs to be done, can get along without him. The handyman is a kind of general mechanician, knowing a little about all useful trades. He is an amateur plumber, carpenter, electrician, surveyor, farmer, nurse, and doctor. The more primitive the section in which he lives, the greater his power. Usually he has more common sense than other people, and his ready dry humor amuses us in spite of ourselves, for though grateful that he can do so many things just well enough, we yet are often annoyed that they are not better done. Still, he is the helpmeet of the tired wife and mother, and has been known to turn the clothes wringer, make the coffee, wash the dishes, and walk the floor with the baby. That he should lay the kitchen fire and do the chores is part of the widely recognized but unwritten marriage contract. He may be an inventor spoiled in the making, having taken out several useless patents, or he may have graduated into the handyman from having broken down as minister, lawyer, or insurance agent. The genuine kind, however, starts in life handy, hired out as a boy, and is the sole support of his mother until he falls in love. He straightens out crooked nails, saves strings and paper bags, and eats with his coat on, having a sense of the fitness of things. He is not the kind that spends money on barns and mowing machines, yet lets his wife fetch water from the well, for he pipes the water supply into the house as far at least as the kitchen sink. Being handy, he sees the pecuniary value of labor-saving devices for women as well as for men. And, oh, the fences he mends, the gate latches he adjusts, the wagons he repairs, and yet he cannot shoe a horse. He knows with a pitiful sense of his weakness that he is just handy, and that he can do things, but also that he lacks sustained mental vigor, and depends upon the women folk. What is the evasive quality he lacks, when yet he has been so ready for pioneer life? Is it that his sense of the immediate and incidental has overweighted his long-headedness and his grasp of broad outlooks. He follows precedence rather than adopts initiative. He is strong in simple expedience, but cannot reason on long lines, his want of self-conceit hindering his being quite sure that he knows it all. Then he is neither masterful nor diplomatic in family life. He is just patient and not over-strong in health, but he calls his wife dear and is always a lover. For all that, he is no longer the product of modern, subdivided life, in which specialists are routing handy men, for this is the inner contention of industrial education, the kind of mechanic high arts and special trades instruction that is now given to boys as part of school knowledge is lessening their all-around ability to be handy, and is fostering in them a dislike to do anything outside of their expert training and as a long step from that to marriage comes the result that a home costs more than it once did, partly because the expert husband has not the common sense to be also handy. His wages as skilled workmen seldom are the equivalent of the money he loses by paying others to do little jobs round the house or place. More than that, his pride rebels at doing himself what he could do, but which is not his trade. Yet, if his mother, wife, or daughter refused to be alike cook, laundress, seamstress, and scrubber, he would upbraid her for her shortcomings and denounce the public schools for not training her properly to do the multifarious duties of womanhood simultaneously. The scarcity of handy men increases with each new specialization in industry. 
we all have heard of happy home lives where the man is handy the home jobs he does accruing not only in value of things done but in savings deposited in the bank and we also see homes begotten by men trained as experts where unless the wages or income is unusually large bills are run up for repairs and foreclosure of mortgages follows extreme instances these may be of each kind of home the truth lying between them in daily practice but any theory of industrial training which over and above its expert success results in a low estimate of the man who is handy though not skilled hurts the community and just as common sense is as great as any other sense so should the capacity for being handy be valued as an essential in character to be handy is to know what to do in an emergency before the doctor or expert arrives of course it is better to be both the skilled workman and the handyman but let not the former despise the latter who will always yearn for expert skill again is it on a more practical plane the old question of the college educated or the self-made man it is so foolish to decry either when both have given of their best to the world though each one's best is different in kind from his neighbors however the handy man is never the leftover man who not wanted by any one is always mildly in the way either he did not begin or was not begun in the right way as a boy and as a fellow was shoved aside by the girls with the fetch and carry role of social loneliness assigned to him at picnics and balls he has little grip in his muscles is understood only by his mother and becomes either a recluse or marries a shrewish woman perhaps it is in the summer when a housekeeper is far away from the base of supplies or repair shops that she best appreciates the handyman life then would be impossible without him just to let him come in the door with saw or chisel in hand and to hear him crack his jokes cheers her up may technical instruction never wholly destroy his capacity for being the most all-round helpful kind of home companion ever given to woman end of section eight